We're at the Williamsburg Museum this year for our arts festival, our annual arts festival. Um, we do this to support local artists and craftspeople, and we always have a really good turnout. Tonight is the sneak preview night, and we have hors d'oeuvres and let um, historical society members and chamber members get an invitation to come to the preview night. We started, I wish I knew exactly how long ago it was, but we had one years ago for Ellen Bass and Michelle Duke, just the two of them with paintings and photography. And after that, we decided to add a few more artists and every year we get, we've added more artists. We had more this year than we've ever had. Actually, we have 18. We have oil paintings, we have acrylics, we have watercolors, we have pencil sketches, and we have, um, we also have some crafts. We have the blacksmith, and he also makes soap and candles. But we have, um, you know, we just keep adding new things. We have some kaleidoscopes downstairs, and Tommy Boyd makes Windsor chairs that are beautiful. So we've got a variety of, of things for people to buy, prints and original art. I'm originally born in Charleston, South Carolina, and naturally started in the art world very early in high school. Had art teachers that loved to do scenes all around local uh, Charleston area. So started in classes at the Gibbs Art Gallery down in Charleston. Married and came to Salters, Williamsburg County, back in... <gasps> <laughs> And so, as a nurse practitioner, traveled for the health department, but did commercial murals in the meantime for different businesses all up and down the East Coast. And Florence was one of the biggest uh, art areas for um, commercial murals. And so I worked there uh, on vacation and weekends. And then when I retired from medicine, I went into art full time with teaching and going to see other artists' instructions and enjoying different artists' approaches. And um, just, I have no particular medium. I like watercolors, acrylics, pastels, oils, and all subjects, absolutely, even Charleston and Williamsburg um, paintings and etchings and watercolors. But basically, people seem to love today's era, abstracts. So I went into the abstract business and sold many, many abstracts to gymnasiums and um, different places because when people exercise, they try to figure out what the picture says. And to them, each person had another venue of what the painting was about. And I find that very fascinating. But with the local art, you do uh, local art. <laughs> and it seems to uh, address the public's need. And I rather do volume and volume of work in preference of doing, say, a year study in one medium and one painting. So. Um, here in King Street at Williamsburg, the um, Beehive has a lot of my, my work. <clears throat> and my work is actually all over the United States and over in Europe. But um, the East Coast is my favorite place to uh, do my marketing. I let my husband do my marketing. <laughs> I paint, he sells. <laughs> but um, the artist today it's such a, uh, what would you say, a outlet for so many people that have um, problems or, or they're lonely or they um, just really need to have something to occupy their mind. And it's a wonderful habit, art, hobby to get into. But you have to be in a habit, just like you practice the piano. You always practice, I'm 81, I still take instructions from other uh, artists and uh, paint every day. Don't let a day go by without painting. This one, 
little uh, etching is an uh, ink watercolor sketching from one of my patients' homes. It was an elderly couple that were quite poor, but um, they were the happiest people I think I've ever met. They had water, they had electricity, they had each other. And I saw such beauty in their little home. And through the years, this is a print, but these have always sold very well because it expresses happiness no matter where you are. Um, I've got a few artworks that I made with some children with the students at Williamsburg Academy here in King Street. This is my fifth grade embossing. The children uh, embossed the Celtic crosses and we wrapped them around pieces of foam core and put them on a frame that was made by Carmen and Raymington Covington and put a mirror in the center and they did a super good job at it. And also this is a quilling down at the bottom that was made, that was by my fourth grade students. And each child made a quill, which is it's rolled paper. And we made it into a red bird and some dogwoods. And over here is my third grade and we each chose a chrismon from the uh, Christian symbols. And that's a soft metal that they engraved into. We put all the squares together to form our Lord's cross. And we titled it Believe. I brought my artwork of my mom's, the, uh, my painting I did of her and her puppy Puddin'. That was actually in Art Fields last year. I haven't had a chance to do a lot of painting this year, so I brought it from last year. It's a soft pastel on Masonite board. And this one is one I did in a workshop at the Island Gallery. And um, we just, I just practiced water, working in water. I'd, I'd done so many portraits that I felt like I needed to get back into more landscaping type things. So I just worked on it. Had a good time. It was a two-day workshop. It was wonderful. I still like portraiture. I, just to be able to get someone's likeness to me is just a, is a great gift. And, and, um, and I guess the Lord is really behind it all. Because of Him, we're able to do what we are able to do. And, when I, and I'm able to do my art projects with my children at WA. Just being able to bring Him into it, um, it makes it all worth it. I'm Alvin Glenn. I'm at the Williamsburg Historic Museum at their annual arts festival. I uh, enjoy doing pastels. I enjoy doing mixed media drawings. And for this particular event, I'm mainly exhibiting pastels. I started doing pastels because I wanted to use a brighter palette. Uh, before pastels, I was doing a lot of mixed media drawings, a lot of muted colors, and with subjects that were not happy subjects. But I started thinking back to my youth and the kinds of things I did growing up and all the happy times, even though the work was a little strenuous, the times were pleasurable because I was working with friends and relatives. I've done things from my past, um, the work scenes, uh, mothers and fathers, children at play. I've done uh, social-political themes that deal with um, social equality. And uh, I've recently done a few of those using pastels. But uh, right now, I guess because I'm a new grandfather with two grandkids, uh, I'm doing more family-oriented things. I, I'm feeling happy and using a happier palette. All right, this piece is called Tobacco Worms. And I did that because when I worked in tobacco, one of the fears was the worms. The guys really didn't worry about it too much, but the ladies did, and whenever we found a worm, we'd throw it wherever the ladies were to get a little thrill going during the day. Uh, but it was fun work, that's why the bright colors again. The piece on the bottom is the cane mill. I, my job was to feed the cane mill, so that's kind of like seeing myself at work, and that's what I did. I sat down, and they had to tell me to get up a lot but I would feed the cane into the mill, let the juices come out, carry the juices in to the cook shed where it would cook down and become cane syrup. Well, the positive uh, thing about having an art festival like this, it's twofold. You get to see history, you get to see great artwork, you get to meet people that uh, give you conversations that can turn into other artworks because when people see things that they can personally identify with, it helps trigger my desire to create artworks that other people can enjoy because of what they can bring to the piece and not just what I decided to draw.
I have been an art teacher all my life, but in the past four years I have taken up oil for myself, trying to develop my own interest in oil. I really like painting and using color. Um, nature inspires me. Um, just seeing the brilliant colors and seeing God's handiwork in nature is what I like to portray. Um, I have been kind of infatuated with egrets and birds all my life. Some of my earliest artwork as a child were these white birds you'd see in the fields and I still enjoy painting them. So this is an egret at Debbie Dew from a photograph that I took. Um, this one is Garden City, the docks, and what intrigues me is reflection and color. Um, I've been wanting to paint it for a long time and so I finally did a month or so ago. And that is from the Garden City docks. This one is um, a beautiful little waterfall in an aqueduct when I was in France last summer. Um, some ladies and I took a trip and studied under William McCullough and this is one of my paintings from France. Of course, this is a tobacco barn that we see everywhere around our area. Um, and I just enjoy, I enjoy painting outside as well as in the studio. This one is a photograph actually from Wild Dunes that my aunt took and it, again it's the blue, the great blue heron. And what struck me about her photograph was the reflection being just reflected into the water. It just was a really cool photograph and she allowed me to do a painting from it. And then the other painting over here is another egret. Um, just, the, just the play of color and the egret coming in. I titled it Searching for Solitude. We're all searching for a little bit of peace. Well, it brings people out. It just allows us to meet new people and um, showcase some of the things that we see around us, I guess. Um, my name is Jennifer Altman. Um, I work on oil on canvas is my primary medium. I'm inspired mostly by um, southern landscapes and rural items. I enjoy um, anything from the local area and the cotton basket um, inspired me because it's actually a local farmer um, at McIntosh. It's actually cotton out of his field is what I use for the still life. So um, I saw it in the field and talked to him and was able to go out in his field and pick the cotton and put it in the basket to set it up for the still life. So um, that was my main source of inspiration for this piece. This one's a study of a woodcock. Um, I've been wanting to do um, a woodcock painting for a while and my husband has been snipe hunting and woodcock hunting so um, I always thought they were beautiful birds. And so um, he killed one and we were able to hang it and I could paint from the actual bird. So I can see the colors better that way when I can paint from real life. Um, this one's called local clusters. These are just local oyster clusters from, we actually had an oyster roast and I saved the clusters. Just think the colors in them are really beautiful. Um, they have different curves in them that are really kind of stunning to capture. So I just saved them and set up the still life from that. I just think people now are starting to realize how unique um, the rural South is. I think it's more appreciated now and more recognized um, just across the board because the rural South has so much character. And you go a lot of places and everywhere is kind of cookie cutter, but if you get to your roots of the rural South, um, nothing's really cookie cutter here. Everything has a lot of character from the fields to the buildings to the unique items that are a part of the rural South.